everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Michelle Raguse McBain, and I am so excited to have on our guest the Fail Forward Live, also known as Fail Forward Live, Abraham Gatel. And Abraham is the CEO of Ask the CEO Media. Abraham, please, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Michelle. I'm really excited to be on your show. And so it brings me a special uh, synergy full circle because I was one of the first guests on your podcast many years ago while I was working at Cisco. And the first person that I thought to ask, uh, you know, as a subject matter expert in the world of podcasting and, and of course, tech influencers is you. So I'd love for you to tell our audience a little bit more about who you are and what you do before we get started. Well, I, first of all, I'm honored and I have big shoes to fill. <laughs> so, yeah, so basically, um, you know, I, I, I come from a 20 year background in telecom and IT. So we had some synergy when, you know, you were in Cisco and, and I would come from the telecom world, from the Avaya world. Um, so right there, we, we connected on, on that level. Um, and then I evolved into, um, thought leadership and uh, influencer marketing for high-tech businesses. So essentially what I do is I, I help promote high-tech uh, global brands and help them get their messages heard over the noise on social media. I love that. Yeah, there's been a lot of noise and clutter, especially with the oversaturation, you know, due to the pandemic, right? Digital transformation. I laugh. I've been selling digital transformation for 17 years, and yet now everyone's talking about it. It's like the world woke up and every industry and every vertical and every company in the world has had to sort of force to quickly pivot in this hour, in this area, in this era. So how do you um, actually help companies um, differentiate from all of the competition that they have? And is there a special way that you're able to connect and, and uh, showcase what you do differently? That is such a great question, Michelle, because I think um, the, first, uh, the first task that every marketer needs to do is to figure out how to differentiate themselves from the pack, you know, how to differentiate your clients uh, from the pack. And this really goes to my journey. How, how I started my, my business and asked, asked the CEO media and the evolution that I went through to get to from, uh, you know, being in, in the, in the tech world, in the telecom world to high tech, um, to high tech global brands. So when I, when I was first, um, going through this change, this transition in my career. Um, it was a difficult year for telecom. Uh, 2017 was the year that Avaya went through a bankruptcy. Right. And I had based my entire career, I should say invested my entire career in Avaya. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when the mothership goes through a bankruptcy, there isn't much of a need for some, uh, you know, super specialist uh, 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 consultant uh, to help businesses through their infrastructure upgrade because they're not doing infrastructure upgrades. Right. So that was the first year um, that I was in a very difficult situation. I had actually prided myself up until then for uh, not being in any debt of any kind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've always been very responsible with my spending. And that year, um, you know, expenses uh, didn't stop, but the income did. Right. Uh, challenging. So it, it was very challenging. So I, I had some serious thinking to do about what I want to do uh, for the future. And I was listening to uh, lots of podcasts. You know, Gary V is a, a big favorite of mine. Um, he's he always got practical advice. And, and uh, I listened to many others and, and the common theme that resonated with me was um, you need to find something about yourself that's unique um, mm -hmm. that you can then leverage and, and deliver value to others. Um, and, and it sounds almost like a cliche, um, but, it, but it's really true, though, um, right. because what ended up happening was I went through a disruption. The industry got disrupted. I got disrupted. And it happened very suddenly. You know, I couldn't really see it coming because telecom didn't change. People didn't stop using phones. Uh, people didn't stop using contact centers. Right. But 
something changed in the industry. Cloud became very prevalent. Mm -hmm. Uh, That took away some of the business. Some of that business changed. And then, you know, there was a a shakeup that occurred in the industry. Um, But it it was really about me and and learning more about myself. What is it that's unique about me? What do I do well and what do I like to do? And, And that was a journey. You know, I didn't figure it out overnight. Sure, sure. And, you know, that is a big leap going from being a consultant to founding and being president and CEO of your own company. So what made you get this idea and how did you find within yourself what your passion really was? Yeah, um, so so th- actually this goes back to something I heard on a Gary V podcast he was talking about how um, how you need to leverage video mm. to get your name out there and differentiate yourself. I love so video. I knew I wanted to do something. Yeah, <laughs> video, right? I mean, that's what we're doing. Yeah, and, and I knew I wanted to do something. I didn't know what I wanted to do, and maybe this resonates with many people watching and listening to the show. Right? You know, you're kind of at a crossroads in life, and what do you do? How do you change careers mid, midstream? And, and, and how do you find what you like to do? So I didn't know. Um, but but Gary, Gary was talking about leveraging video to differentiate yourself. And he gave an example, a very practical example. He said, let's say you're a real estate agent that wants to get a name for yourself as the go-to person in the neighborhood, as somebody that is a trusted name that knows the neighborhood and that'll get you the best deal for, for your money. Mm-hmm. Um, what you should do is you should interview all the business owners in the neighborhood uh, and and create a daily vlog where you're posting videos every single day. You're talking to Joe, the shopkeeper, you know, the butcher, the, the newspaper okay. stand, and, and pretty much like everybody will get to know you as the one that knows this neighborhood inside out. So the when they have a need to buy a home, who are they going to go to? They're going to go to you. Absolutely. Um, and the so, references you're sharing are very much similar to where you and I are from, which is Brooklyn, New York. And so if you're somewhere else and you're like, who has a butcher on their corner? We did. <laughs> exactly. I love it. No, great. So, yeah. And- that was your passion. You found it. And you said, I'm going to leverage video and I'm going to go forth. And then now I'm going to ask you, because this is sort of this position, right? Like there's obviously you're very successful. You're very reputable. You win many awards for your technology uh, influencer awards. How looking back, I'm sure you've had some challenges. I'm sure you've had some failures along the way. What advice would you give young Avraham of 21 years of age, if you could say, I'm going to give you, you know, some learnings about your journey, what would you tell yourself? What would you change, if anything? If anything, I would say two things. Mm. I, w- I would say have confidence in yourself. Mm. Um, you know, it's very easy to doubt yourself, especially when you don't know what, what the future holds. You don't know where you're going and you see everybody ahead of you being so successful. Mm. Um, and you know, you kind of compare yourself to the others and you go, nah, that's not me. I'm not, I'm not going to get there. Um, so I would say have confidence in yourself. And the second thing is keep doing it. You know, don't, Mm. don't quit, keep trying. And that's what I did. I persevered, but you know, I was very doubtful. And there were times when I took a break for quite, quite a lot of time because I wasn't sure if I was spending my energy in the right place. People would give me advice. And a lot, a lot of the times it wasn't good advice. They would say, well, you're not making money at this. So why are you wasting your time here? And, you know, they were looking at things through their very limited um, you know, uh, lens, their, their narrow scope, but they didn't have that big picture vision. And I didn't have the confidence, you know, to, to assert myself and say, no, you know, this is where I, where I want to go. Right. So I would say to, those, you know, to my younger self and to those of us that might be in that similar position, mm. you know, really have confidence in yourself because 
you can do it and you know just keep keep at it uh would be my message I love that so much. And I'm reminded of, you know, Walt Disney and, you know, all of these people that were told no or denied so many times before they got it right and made it really big. And if you just took your first no and gave up and quit, you would never know what your true potential is, what your true opportunity is. I love that so much. So here's my next question. In hindsight, personally or professionally, what do you think your biggest failure was and what did it teach you? That is a very powerful question. Mm. Um, People don't like to talk about their failures, um, but the truth is that a failure, it, it, it does not, it, it doesn't mean that there is some kind of a defect in you or that you had poor judgment. It's really a life lesson. You know, there, there is no instruction manual to life. And, right. and it's really about, right. You know, we're, you know, what's, what if I, if I would have done it differently, you know, would it would have allowed me to accelerate to where I am and what lessons that I learned along the way. So, um, I mean, certainly I could tell you that, um, I can tell you that it was, you know, a, a paradigm that I grew up with, which is, um, you know, the, the job mentality, um, you know, you, you go to college, you get your degree, then you go to, you know, you, you, you get your first job and, and, you know, you keep, uh, you know, progressing in, in your career. Until you <laughs> yeah, until you retire, pretty much, and the job is everything. Um, that world has changed so drastically in the last, I would say, ten years or, or so, probably more than ten years. But in the last decade, certainly, that paradigm has gone out the window. Sure. Um, and it was around that time when when that disruption had, had occurred. I had actually left corporate America um, long before that. But I was still functioning as if I had a job. You know, my my consulting uh, business was basically a job. It was just me as as a sole proprietor consultant, and as long as I had work to fill my time, I was happy. I didn't think about the future. You know, what happens if if uh, something terrible happens? You know, some calamity in the industry. You know, how will I pivot? How will I? Yeah, how will I change direction and and uh, continue from there? And that thinking never occurred to me. Mm. Um, and that's something that I learned from that experience, uh, which is uh, you can't have just a single source of income. You, you know, you you can no longer live that way because the the industry, the market changes so quickly you won't see it coming and you might find yourself in a difficult situation one day. Um, So, you know, you and I were chatting offline and I was telling you how, you know, I I'm pretty diversified in terms of uh, the activities I do on a daily basis, because you can't just have, you know, one major client or, you know, one company that you work for um, as a, as a sole source of revenue. Mm. A lot of side hustles. And I mentioned to you, I was so surprised because I was on a call the other day and there was uh, a chief diversity officer on the phone and she said from a Fortune uh, Fortune 50 company, yeah, in my side hustle. And I was like, whoa, like very surprising to hear that even at that level that, you know, there's sub passions that you might have or sub um, interest. And maybe it's not always monetarily driven. Sometimes it's passion driven, sometimes it's purpose driven, but you might have many roles that you want to fulfill, you know, philanthropically or otherwise that may give you a a complete fulfillment of who you are. And I think for me, that's what the pandemic did for so many people, right? It gave us a pause to be very introspective over you know, whether we're looking at our company or ourselves or our clients, but 
what is the, you know, reassessment or reimagination of what we want to achieve? And your goals of December in 2019 probably weren't the same in March of 2020, and they may not be the same in May of 2021. So we're in this constant evolution. And I love what you said that it wasn't, you know, set it and forget it. This is my path in life. And I'm going to, you know, grow old in this career. But maybe you have multiple plans and visions and you take you take those on and you execute them. I love that so much. I really do. Um, I want to ask you another question. You have probably had some mentors along the way, but I I find that I can't just ask for one (laughs) because everybody impacts you at different ages or stages of your life or career. So if you look back in your life or today, who would you say your three biggest mentors are and why, or what have they taught you? Yeah, you're so right. Um, Nobody exists in a vacuum. And somebody had some effect on you along the way. Um, so my first mentor, uh, someone I never met uh, and who probably doesn't know that I exist, but that that's Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, I really maybe took to, <laughs> yeah, maybe he'll listen to, to, to this. Uh, <laughs> um, but you know, on, on a serious note, I, I took to heart a lot of, a lot of um, a lot of his messages, a lot of his lessons. I, I bought all his uh, audio books. I would listen to them on my power walks uh, and when I'm in the car. Whenever I had a free moment, I would listen to one, one either his book or his podcast or something because it's full of value to whoever whoever wants to receive. He's got you know he's got what to give, mm. and, and I learned a lot from him just just by listening to him. Um, so he would be number one. Um, number two is uh, Tamara McCleary. Mm, um, you know, she, okay. She's a, a, an influencer also in high tech. Um, she has actually personally mentored me at times. Um, you know, she made time to sit with me and kind of help me steer, uh, steer the ship. You know, make those little course corrections along the way. Um, Amazing. She's amazing. That's wonderful. She is, and it's not like it's not like she has idle time either. Um, you know, she is CEO of a very prominent business, and uh, you know, she she works many time zones, uh, and, and I'm grateful for the time that she's made for me to to mentor me along the way. Amazing. And I then number three, <laughs> number three um, is a, a guy by the name of Ken Heron. He's a chief marketing officer at a company called UIB, uh, which is based in Singapore. And Ken actually took me under his wing in 2017 when I was sort of floundering. Um, I, I, I knew that I wanted to get into high tech, into IoT, into AI. I, I All I knew how to do was uh, spell those words. <laughs> I think they were acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and Ken kind of, you know, taught me um, the basics about, about starting out as a marketer. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and uh, you know, we spent probably a good six months working together. Um, and, and I'm, you know, truly grateful for the time that he spent with me to, to teach me, uh, you know, everything I needed to know to get started doing what I'm doing today. Incredible. I love that so much. Thank you for sharing that. And a special shout out for all those mentors. And I think that's something we talk a lot about, you know, the mentors and the champions and sponsors that you have in your journey, which may be not all the same. Um, But mentorship, I always say is such a um, aspirational goal, but it doesn't always come to fruition because you do need two parties that are willing to give time and willing to have a commitment and willing to make a relationship that is sort of goal oriented and metric driven, you know? So part of the reason for me creating this podcast was to have leaders share their mentors and journeys and wisdom with other people. So we can continue this train of inspiration that, you know, life lessons that we all kind of impart and take in. Um, One of the things you said, and and, you know, when you, you, go ahead, I just, 
I, I just wanted to add, you know, so when you talk about the mentors where you have to have two parties that are willing, the right. picture that comes to mind is if you remember the scene from the karate kid oh, where yes. um, well, I forgot the guy's name, Miyagi, he goes, Miyagi. my job is to teach and your job is to learn. And <laughs> that, that's how it has to be. You have to be fully committed. Yes. And you have to be willing to learn and listen and kind of put down some of your um, defenses. And I believe that you can learn something new at every age and stage and level of your career. And and one of the guests I had recently talked about even just learning from somebody much younger and, and new to the role, new to the tech channel, um, and didn't have a lot of experience, but taught them so much as well. So we call that reverse mentorship as well. It's that constant loop of just learning. And I, I use the word superpower. You mentioned earlier, what is my passion? What is my skill? I call that your superpower. Everybody has a superpower. And are you using your superpowers to really shine and differentiate um, yourself in, in your course, in your life? So I love that. Um, now, you mentioned something that was very funny to me because a lot of times when you and I talk to each other on our chats, you're power walking, which I love because I'm sitting here in my chair and I'm like, I really should be power walking or riding a Peloton, which we both do, um, or something yeah. to that nature. So you kind of multitask. So I was going to ask, in terms of what you listen to or what you do to clear your mind, what are some of the things that you find advantageous that help you, you know, kind of focus or maybe some resources or books or a podcast like Ask the CEO that you would listen to that help kind of inspire you or others on their journey? So, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you, you know, you mentioned it right there, the power walking, for example, when I'm doing physical activity, um, that helps me focus my mind. And I'll give you, uh, I'll give you a real world example. Um, so I gave a keynote address in India at the end of 2019, right before the pandemic. And it was about all the latest trends in technology. It was a very inspirational keynote. And I remember when I was invited uh, to give this keynote address, and it was probably two months earlier, beginning of September of that year. And I remember thinking, what on earth am I going to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> and, and my mind was a blank. I knew this is something I wanted to do. And I was very honored by that opportunity. I just couldn't figure out what I was going to say. And I remember I, I, uh, I got up for a 5 a.m. run and, you know, the fresh, uh, cool air I did a four, four and a half mile run. And okay. on that run, I literally um, composed the entire outline wow. of that, uh, of that presentation. And the second I got home, I took a pen and paper and wrote it down. Cause I knew that as soon as the blood stops pumping, uh, I, I'm going to forget everything. <laughs> it, it's going to disappear. Um, yeah. So like somehow it put me like in the Zen state where I was able to meditate and, and focus on something, you know, that I really love to do. And it just gave me that clarity. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't listen to music when, when I go outside. I, I just like the ambiance, the, you know, the birds chirping, the, the, the air, the stillness. And, mm -hmm. and it helps put me in a very relaxed state. Um, so, you know, the physical activity, that's why I make my calls during power walks. Because number one, it's healthy. There, there isn't a lot of time in the day to to right. stay fit. But if you can somehow um, double that up with something else that you need to do, now you just create a time in your day. So I, I, you know, I like to do that. I love that so much. Are there any particular books that you enjoy reading or um, besides your podcast that you enjoy listening to? Yeah. So, so, um, self-help, I, I, you know, I'm a big fan of self-help and self-improvement books on mindset, uh, books on business. Um, and, and, you know, like those are, those are the areas of my passion. Cause I always believe that no matter how good you are, you could always improve. You could always do things better and you could always learn from others. So things, things along those lines, you know, cause those are the things that I'm interested in improving my mindset and improving my business uh, savviness if you want to call it that, uh, you know, I mentioned Gary V, um, you know, I'm a big fan, fan of him as well. So like, those are the kinds of things that I, I like to listen to. 
I love that. And um, for, you know, anybody that's listening to us that, you know, may have some myths about what a, an influencer is, it's not Kim Kardashian. What would you want to debunk the myths that might exist against channel influencers and what exactly it means or what exactly it is? Because I think it's still a mystery to many people. Right. That was a perfect example, right? You know, an influencer and, and a high tech isn't going to go around with a shirt or saying, buy this, you know, buy this mainframe. It's the best thing in the world. Yeah, because, you know, we're dealing with people who are much um, smarter than that. You know, they're, they're going to see through that and that's not going to accomplish anything. But an influencer is really about somebody that shares information. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's someone that takes information from one source and presents it, uh, you know, to the audience. And mm -hmm. I'll give you an example of, of, of uh, a way that you influenced me without you even realizing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just talked about my, my fitness and, and how I, you know, take my, my personal health uh, seriously. Mm -hmm. I like to go for a run or, or for a power walk. Mm -hmm. um, it was during the winter months and snow in New York, as you know, isn't, uh, you know, the, the winter yeah. is <laughs> it's kind of dreary between That's the cold. You're locked down in a quarantine. Locked down in a quarantine. I mean, you take everything and, and you yeah. know, you, you dump that in, into one, one, one situation and going outside isn't always very pleasant. Um, mm. And, you know, for the longest time, I was trying to figure out, you know, what what can I do indoors? And then, you know, you got your Peloton and you were posting workouts. And I was thinking to myself, you know, that's what I really want. Um, so it's not like you were out there saying, buy this, buy this. You were just sharing your own personal experience with the Peloton. And mm -hmm. I saw that and it resonated with me. And I said, you know, this is what I need in my life. And I got it. And I'm very happy with that. I um, love that. I, so that's I what I do on a professional scale. <laughs> I love that. I get to influence in technology and exercise equipment. My role <laughs> is expanding. <laughs> <laughs> they should send you a commission, a free, you know, like a free T-shirt or something. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Honestly, it's one of the, for if you don't have a Peloton, uh, you can follow. What is your Peloton name for anyone listening if they want to race you? So so it's the same name as my Twitter handle, which is Avraham G, A-V-R-O-H-O-M-G. Awesome. And I'm Michelle McBain, but I'm going to come up with something more creative because I feel like there's a low bar set for me right now in creativity. And I know that I have it in me to go bigger. So <laughs> Here you go. Um, so now you and I are both very passionate about advancing women and diversity in technology. I love that about you. I love your passion. I love that you join all the things. You're an ally and an advocate and a supporter for this cause, which is so important, especially right now. McKinsey reported that one in four women left careers in technology during the pandemic. Prior to this, there's been a 10-year decline of women entering careers in technology. There's a lack of diversity, despite the profitability and the success metrics associated with hiring and promoting top talent that are um, diverse uh, women, etc. So why are you so passionate about this topic? I'd love to know. Yeah, and, and and that goes exactly to what you said, right? Despite the 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 fringe benefits, despite the positive impact that it's going to have on on businesses, the reason why I'm so passionate, I guess it would you, you could attribute that to my personality. Um, so you know, I'm for fairness, and and um, you know, I am I I have empathy, like when I see somebody. Um, um, putting in effort in their career. And I think back to, you know, where I was and I, I don't see a difference between myself and the other person. And I feel that the other person should have the same chances that I have. And, you know, there's no room for discrimination. So I, you know, I, it, it it just doesn't, it doesn't vibe with me. I, I don't like, I don't like that. I don't like when I see discrimination between people. I, I, I really sincerely appreciate that so much. And I love the idea of just like equal opportunity. I'm curious, as a Jewish man, have you ever felt discrimination in the technology environment? 
Not really. I think a, a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm American and mm-hmm. and I grew up in New York, which has a lot of opportunity. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure you know there are others uh, in my uh, situation that maybe um, grew up in other you know other parts of the world that might have experienced discrimination. Uh, me personally, I you know I I haven't uh, you know just I think because of that because of my my background. I love, I love, you know, and so that was my, um, my biggest reason. So growing up, my grandmother was uh, a small Polish Catholic woman, but her best friend was a, a Jewish woman who actually survived the Holocaust. And, uh, she just taught me so much about just the fact that despite they were different religions or came from different places or spoke different languages, that they were so close and they, they, they both had so much love and compassion. And I always think that, you know, in our differences, we can find so much beauty and so much um, lessons that we can share. And and in the end, I think we're all more alike than we are different. That's the, and the differences that we do have make it that much richer and more beautiful. So thank you for sharing that. I was just curious, you know, from that circumstance. Um, And obviously, especially in New York, COVID has been very much a challenging around the world. I mean, our prayers, you mentioned India, to all of those experiencing any struggle right now, I, I'm very much um, empathetic towards that situation. Uh, New York was an epicenter. I live in Florida. That was an epicenter. My family comes from Italy and many parts that were deeply impacted as well. So when you can travel again safely, unless maybe you have already, where do you want to go first? Where's the first place that you want to go? to in a in a new world you have to take a mask and wear it on the plane for 18 hours where are you going <laughs> <laughs> yeah right um so there there are two places number one is israel um i i was there in august of 2019 uh, and I can't wait to go back uh, you know that that is a place that is very special to me and very dear to me um, and the next place i would go is australia Oh, two of my favorites. I had the pleasure of, you know, Jay and I did that around the world the wrong way to end in Australia, but we took our two little girls to 15 countries and four continents in 21 days. It was the first time either of us had been to Israel and uh, just such uh, an amazing country. They too are experiencing so much right now. Again, prayers go to the uh, to the Israelis and everything. Just wishing a lot of safety and health and happiness around the world. It's been very challenging. We've experienced a lot of ups and downs over the past two years, definitely. So in my hearts and prayers. Um, and my final question to you, Avraham, is if you could step into my shoes and ask yourself something that I missed or that I didn't think of, what would you ask yourself? Wow. Um, that is a good question. <laughs> right. Um, so what I would say is that um, the question that I would ask is, how did you end up from, you know, you talked about your journey and your evolution, mm-hmm. but how did you bridge that gap from starting out, taking a direction and actually making money with it? Yes. Uh, Great question. How did you? <laughs> right. Because that is something I remember that was on my mind when when I was first starting out. How do you monetize your dream? How do you, you know, how do you turn it into something real? Um, so I'll, I'll answer that and I'll share that with everybody. You know, this is a, a very real story. You know, this is, again, my my journey, my evolution. I'm still living it. I'm still evolving and traveling along, along that path. Mm-hmm. Um, for the longest time, I didn't even have a direction. Uh, I just knew I, you know, like I mentioned, I want to work in high tech. Um, so when I heard that advice from Gary Vaynerchuk, I, uh, I started interviewing business owners and, and business leaders in high tech. And that's how I connected with you. I connected with Jay and then, you know, many others a- along the way. Um, and I just kept doing it. Um, people would tell me, you know, stop wasting your time. 
Uh, you're not doing anything with it. It's distracting you from making a living and so on and so on and so on. Um, and, and you know what? I, I, did, I did take time to process my doubts, to process my fears. And every time I would stop, I would you know, have this breather. Um, it would also help me clarify in my mind that, you know what? No, this is what I want to do. I don't know where, what, when, how, but I just know that th I want to keep doing this. Yeah. So I kept doing it. And then one day I connected with an influencer who, who connected me with other influencers, uh, you know, cause Hey, if you have a podcast and you're interviewing people, influencers love, love that coverage, you know, now more people get to learn about them Absolutely. and they get, and they get, get to amplify. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, and so, and then, um, so I started to become very active in the influencer community. Um, mm. you know, I started to become relevant, um, and then, um, and, and then one of my, one of my colleagues actually introduced me to my very first client. Uh, and then once you get paid work, um, you know, you're on the map because once you have that first client, now you're relevant. And, right. you know, I started working with companies like IBM, uh, Microsoft, uh, Ericsson, um, you know, this year with Dell, um, and there are a couple of others uh, as well that I've worked with. And, you know, it just one thing led to another. So, you know, you just keep doing it and you keep doing excellent work and and you bend over backwards for your clients. You know, you you deliver excellence. So then as I'm doing that, uh, I'm getting on all these influencer lists because um, by doing this work, I mean, you, you are relevant. You're, you know, like, like I said about being an influencer, you're sharing information. You're sharing something that people didn't know before. Right. Um, so just, you know, getting on people's podcasts and sharing information allowed me or enabled me to perfect my craft and become more relevant in the market. And then you know, essentially a journey over several years. That's how I got to where I am today. I love it. I am so inspired by your your story and your journey. And I'm so proud that you had the courage to follow your passion and and also inspire me to do the same thing. I really, you know, reflected over what what sort of podcast that I want to create in this mission. And really my goal was just this, you know, we all have this evolution. Nothing happens immediately. And sometimes you pivot in your life and Sometimes those pivots make for the best journey along the way. And I can see that reflected in you and your experiences. And And I'm thankful for the opportunity to get to know a little bit more and share that story because you're always the one behind the camera asking the questions. So I'm glad everyone gets to learn a little bit more about you as well. If somebody wanted to find you, how could they do so? The best way is to come to my website, asktheceo.biz.biz. Over there, you um, you can go to my uh, media page. You'll see my podcasts on, on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. So you'll find like all my different uh, channels. Uh, and then of course, on Twitter, uh, uh, my handle is Avraham G, A-V-R-O-H-O-M-G. And I love to connect with people. Awesome. Abraham, it's been an absolute pleasure having you. I'm so thankful for your time and I wish you much continued success and I'm going to race you on the Peloton today. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Michelle. I, I really enjoyed being on your show. Thank you. We'll talk again soon. I hope you guys all have a great week. Take